La verità non è soltanto bella, ma è piena di mistero e non occorre darsi al misticismo per vivere delle meravigliose avventure. Ogni persona che si rallegra alla vista della creazione vivente e della sua bellezza è vaccinata contro il dubbio che tutto ciò possa essere privo di senso. La vita pervade il nostro pianeta nella forma di innumerevoli specie di organismi e il progresso enorme delle, delle scienze biologiche, specie negli ultimi 70 anni, ha rivelato che la vita dipende da un'organizzazione materiale di straordinaria complessità che nella sua logica sorprendente, fatta di segni, codici, significati, accomuna tutti i viventi, dal batterio unicellulare fino all'immensa varietà delle specie animali e vegetali che popolano le acque e la terra, fino all'uomo, a ognuno di noi. La natura profonda di ogni organismo risiede nel suo essere in relazione costitutiva con altro da sé. Attraverso il metabolismo, di fatto, l'organismo trasforma in sé porzioni di mondo, in un processo continuo di emancipazione dal mondo che non cessa mai paradossalmente di essere nello stesso tempo dipendenza radicale dal mondo stesso, sorretto in questa continua tensione da una sorta di coreografia sorprendente di acrobazie chimiche che non possono cessare senza che cessi al contempo anche la vita stessa. Noi uomini godiamo di un altissimo privilegio. Da un lato, attraverso l'indagine scientifica dei sistemi viventi, andiamo scoprendo uno scenario sempre più affascinante e sbalorditivo. Dall'altro, sappiamo che adesso, misteriosamente, corrisponde quello stato originario che in modo immediato riconosciamo in noi e, per analogia, nei più diversi organismi con i quali condividiamo l'avventura dell'esistenza sulla Terra, l'essere soggetti vivi, l'essere viventi. Cosa significa per Heinz sostenibilità e qual è il vostro impegno in questo settore? Per noi di Heinz la sostenibilità non significa soltanto il massimo raggiungimento delle performance energetiche sui nuovi fabbricati che stiamo realizzando, sui nuovi progetti che ormai sono emissioni zero, ma soprattutto per noi la nuova frontiera della sostenibilità è la sostenibilità economica del progetto sottostante e quindi una sostenibilità per tipologia di destinazione d'uso. Come devono cambiare le città per rispondere a questi criteri? Questo vuol dire che il prodotto nuovo che si andrà a realizzare o eh, soprattutto la rigenerazione del prodotto esistente, su cui noi crediamo eh, moltissimo, dovrà sicuramente essere un prodotto che intercetta l'esigenza della domanda attuale e quindi per noi di Heinz sicuramente una destinazione residenziale in affitto che riguarda tutto lo spettro della domanda, che va dagli studenti agli anziani ed ovviamente con il grande tema delle famiglie. Nel post-Covid ci saranno dei cambiamenti nella progettazione di case e uffici? Secondo quali direttrici? Per noi il Covid non ha cambiato o alterato i scenari e i paradigmi eh, immobiliari o anche se dell'economia. Per noi è un evento drammatico, profondissimo, che avrà le sue conseguenze, ma è un evento. E quindi come tutti gli eventi poi c'è un inizio eh, e c'è una fine. Secondo noi il Covid ha accelerato alcuni trend che erano già in essere prima e che secondo noi adesso 
prendono sempre più uh, rilevanza come appunto eh, il residenziale in affitto ma soprattutto residenziale con dei servizi uh, ancillari. Come verranno percepiti questi cambiamenti dalle persone nel quotidiano? La percezione delle famiglie eh, avverrà nel proprio modo di vivere, che ripeto non è che cambierà in maniera radicale col Covid, ma eh, si adeguerà a delle eh, nuove proposte nel prodotto immobiliare come appunto delle residenze, degli spazi flessibili che prevedono non solo l'utilizzo per esempio dell'abitazione in sé, ma soprattutto l'utilizzo di servizi ancillari per fare degli esempi, da uno spazio co-working al servizio babysitting, al servizio eh, pacchi eh, di ricezione dei, della posta di Amazon, al servizio concierge in modo da non utilizzare l'automobile, che cambieranno il modo di vivere il prodotto immobiliare. Siamo andati avanti distratti. Fingendo che tutto fosse sotto il nostro controllo. È successo qualcosa che ha scombinato i nostri piani. La realtà si sta riprendendo la scena. L'urto ha fatto riemergere in noi domande normalmente sopite. La vita ha un senso. E la morte... Si può stare da uomini davanti a tutto quello che accade. Paura. Stupore. Si può vivere intensamente anche il volto duro del reale. Conviene fuggire. Possiamo. Il rapporto con la realtà. Ecco la questione più aperta.
Lupita. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to Meet the Meeting. I am Elisabetta Soglio. I'm the director of the Corriere della Sera newspaper insert Buona Notizie that has been a friend of the meeting. And I welcome you from uh, the offices of Il Corriere della Sera in Milan, from uh, Via Solferino, and I'm here to give you good news. And the good news is that this year, in spite of the pandemic and in spite of all the specific issues and problems that uh, exist now, all the safety procedures in order to be safe, well, this year, the meeting will take place from August 18th to August 23rd, and the title is Devoid of Wonder, We Remain Deaf to the Sublime, is a title that many of you already know. And this year's edition is going to be a very special edition, and so this evening we're going to give you some preview in advance, thanks to many guests that are connected with us from Rimini, from the Pala Congressi, the location that will host this 2020 edition. Then we have our guests from other cities in Italy, but also we have some international guests. And uh, we also have people following us uh, from our streaming on YouTube and Facebook, and we have simultaneous English translations. So, uh, meet the meeting is the first step towards the meeting. So usually in the past, uh, we had uh, live encounters uh, in the squares of Italy, but this year that was not possible. And uh, in spite of that, we really wanted to have a proof of the support of uh, uh, people from all over Italy to the meeting. And so let's see how the friends from the different squares decided to say hello to us. The mating is special because, because, as its name says, it's a place for encounters and dialogue and encourages me to get to know the reality surrounding me because there is always something that has to do with my life. To me, it's the most awaited week of the year because at the meeting I've always met so many interesting people and personalities telling their lives, sharing their experiences, and I learned a lot because there is always an exhibition surprises me because it defeats the virus of obviousness, because you meet many happy faces, because it enlarges the heart. 
and ranging from AI to the points I may be studying at school and also because of the bookshop, which is just amazing. And then there are cultural and musical events. Uh, the mating is a must-see, a missable. It is extremely interesting in all of its aspects and especially for the encounters you make because it's full of ideas, encounters that remain with you for the rest of the year. Every time I go, I discover an additional piece of me. Every time I go, I get at least 50 bear hugs from all the new friends. To me, the meeting is special because of its nature. It's the encounter of people, other people. It's open to the world and it opens up the world to you. And we can think about so many things that usually during the year we have not the time to analyze. And everything is free, by the way. So this, May, this year I will follow the mating with Wi-Fi tablet and air conditioning. Well, I will follow it from here. I will watch it from here. I will watch it from home. Well, with any possible mean, this year to follow the mating, I will scrounge air conditioning of some friends. Well, we're going to enjoy it all the same during the day. I will follow it from the beach between a dip into water and the beach volley game this year. Thanks to my iPad, I will follow it from the beach and maybe with beer and chips. And at night, I will follow it from my couch. So at all times, certainly I will follow it online. I hope to do it together with some of the friends that make the work experience to make this so special. I will invite my friends to watch it together with me and my family. Maybe Maybe we'll invite some new friends to watch it with me because they don't know it yet. I will watch it at home so then together we will be able to discuss the sessions and ideas and the testimonies that we're going to watch. I will follow it from the couch with all my family. I will follow the amazing also from my garden, from my brand new swing. Well, waiting to come back to Rimini in August 2021. The next meeting will be so from Tuesday, August 18th until Sunday, August 23rd. I always perfectly remember the dates because they always coincide with my birthday from uh, the 18th to the 23rd of August. So from August 18th to August 23rd, the dates of the next meeting edition are from August 18th to August 23rd. Very good, you got it right, well done. So see you from the beach from August 18th until August 23rd for the meeting special edition, not only in Rimini, but all over the world. The perfect recharge before going back to work. And don't lose sight of each other. Hashtag save the date. Make a note on your calendar. Don't miss it. From August 18th until August 23rd in Rimini. Bye. Here we are. So... You saw that there's already a lot of energy from many, many people, many parts of Italy. But now we would like to better understand the reason behind this choice. Certainly it won't be that easy. It won't be a piece of cake to carry out such an event during such a special period of our lives. And so we're going to talk about this with three guests. So we have the president of the meeting, Mr. Bernardo Scholz, that is live from the Pala Congress in Rimini. Here he is. I can see it. I hope you can see him as well. And uh, yes, so we are getting so many Facebook comments already. And uh, maybe there will be also the possibility to ask uh, some questions to our guests. So, President Schultz, can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Perfect. Then let's go back to Milan, close to me. We have uh, the author and writer Luca Doninelli, a longtime friend of the meeting. Uh, good evening, Luca. Good evening, Elisabetta. Good evening, everybody. Elisabetta, I could see you from my window. Well, I can't move. I need uh, to stay put, so I want to move, but thank you very much. Uh, maybe we will say hello at the end uh, on the window. And then we have from Bologna, Stefano Zamagni. Professor Stefano Zamagni, President of the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences. Uh, good evening, Professor. Good evening, Elisabetta. And good evening to all the friends that are following us uh, online. So let's start straight away with President Schultz. So, Bernard, this year, this is a big, big challenge. Maybe 
you could have decided differently. Many people have postponed events and decided to, I mean, give up somehow. But you decided differently. Why is this going to be a special edition? And uh, can you please uh, tell us a bit more about the reasons behind this choice? Thank you very much, Elisabetta, and uh, say welcome to all of you. So in Italy and abroad, we have many people connected uh, from abroad. Thank you very much for connecting to us and participating and supporting us. And uh, well, this video was extremely moving. It's uh, a lot of encouragement to us because in March, well, there was lockdown and it was a very, very difficult moment to all of us after that we had to decide what to do. Should we carry out the meeting 2020? Yes or no? But right from the start, we were convinced that just during this very difficult period, so uncertain about the future of people, of uh, economy, of politics, it was necessary to carry out the meeting. We felt the need to share experiences, so giving us hope and somehow opening up new perspectives, talking about the most important and compelling topics and issues that uh, are self-evident in this period more than ever. And we decided to do everything we could, but not give up the possibility to continue this incredible experience that has been going on for 40 years now. And uh, many, many friends of the meeting encouraged us to do so. Also, people with economic, uh, cultural and political responsibilities encouraged us to do so. So that's why we started to work on this very special edition. Because, yes, it's going to be very special for two reasons. First of all, because it's going to be very different from uh, the past editions that we all know. But also, it's going to be very special, most of all, because it's going to be an important and meaningful contribution for the reconstruction of our country, of Europe, after these such difficult phase of the pandemic. And... Uh, as it was already said, we're going to have a blended sort of format. So we're going to have plenty of digital events. So we're going to have a full digital deployment on the web, performances, meetings, talks, but also there's going to be some physical participation of people that we have the possibility to come here. Well, a limited number, but sadly, some people will be able to join us here live from Rimini in August. This is a beautiful facility, the one we are in now. It's very practical. It's really beautiful. And certainly, so we are going to make the most of this special edition and new experience. And also, we really want to make the most of this uh, new virtual edition of the meeting because uh, we will be able to reach out to the people all over the world because there are so many people that uh, uh, know about it but could never make it to Rimini. But this year, we, they will be able to follow us. So. This year, everybody will be able to join us and follow us uh, thanks to the web, thanks to the network channels. And we do really hope, and this is a big wish that I'm expressing now, that maybe new people would discover the meeting. People that maybe just heard about it, but thanks to this new uh, participating mode, will have the possibility to experience the meeting. And so this is also then an invitation to all of you to spread the word, to tell about the meeting to your friends and acquaintances in your areas and neighborhoods. Because this event really is something at the service of society. It's about rebuilding our society, our country, creating a more human society, a more sensitive one that is more sensitive to people's needs. So the title is Devoid of Wonder We Remain Deaf to the Sublime. So this is a title that, as we usually do, we choose at the end uh, of the previous year's edition. 
and we could ask ourselves, how can we talk about wonder in such critical times characterized by pandemic? It may sound a, a, a bit odd, but it's like a prophecy. Let's imagine a world without wonder, a life without wonder, without astonishment, without wonder in front of the beauty of nature, of art, with no gratitude for everything we got. Well, that kind of world would be so so to flat, so cynical, made just a pure calculation, just based on purpose. So there would be no breath about what we need to fully live our lives, to fully enjoy them and experience them. We went through something unique in the history of the world. Half of the population of the world had to stay locked in their houses and people had fear, anxiety, and people started asking themselves about the meaning of life, about hope, and many people desperately asked for help because they are not able to face such a huge existential challenge. And also many uh, people, parents, voluntary workers, but also doctors and nurses that made huge sacrifice to face this moment moment that had a great sense of dignity and responsibility. And I think that each one of you somehow has tried to make the most to make this difficult and have a situation lighter. And how can we remain sort of deaf to all that? I mean, uh, it was so uh, incredible. And uh, so many people have started looking for meaning, looking for beauty. And this is something that moved me so much. Some people just got closer to music and art in a new, deeper way. So somehow we all experienced wonder because wonder, if experienced in a deep way, deep down, even during a moment of suffering, l transforms us and uh, connects us to each other and uh, changes us for the better. So the wonder leads us to the meaning of things, to the sublime, so that we can realize the greatness of what we got and we can uh, better express uh, the talents and the gifts we got in order to contribute to a more human world in the field of politics, of uh, economy, and uh, in the social sphere. So these are topics and issues that we're going to uh, talk about during the meeting. I would like to mention a, a boy that recently said, I needed to go back to wonder again, to uh, be surprised. And then there is a beautiful quote by Chesterton that I want to share with you. The world will never end because of the lack of wonder, but because of the uh, the lack of uh, wonder people. So we really wanted to have a rediscovery of wonder, because wonder is there, we just need to realize that. So this should mark a new start for everybody. Thank you very much, Bernard. And uh, so I now go back to Luca Doninelli and uh, let's link up with what uh, Bernard Scholz said. We need to be astonished. We need wonder. The wonders are there, but we need wonder of the people. So, Luca, considering the difficult times we're still in the middle of, because, okay, the most critical times maybe are uh, already behind us, but now there is a social economic emergency. Well, it is still possible to talk about sublime without some sounding maybe misplaced. Well, first of all, good evening, everybody. Well, I'm always a bit scared by the word sublime. It's such a huge, great word, and you need somehow to consider it carefully. And, uh, well, Bernard Schultz talked about the experience of wonder uh, in little daily things, and uh, I had two associates, Gabriela Levi and Giacomo Poretti, my associates in the theater, and they had uh, coronavirus, and uh, the mother of Gabriele uh, died of that. It was so, so sad. So to me, it was really, really dramatic. 
and uh, remaining human is very important. Somebody said that, uh, well, that the meeting, uh, well, uh, that, I mean, uh, wonder is not a vaccine, but, uh, well, I think that uh, wonder still can raise doubts and uh, can uh, somehow help us uh, better cope with things. For instance, the fact of spending so much time with my wife was uh, something incredible. Anything could happen, but at one point, and this is what happened to me, I somehow rediscovered the great value and importance of uh, this very important bond. Sometimes in the past I took it for granted but I realized that it's a very important bond. And so I somehow enjoyed the presence of my wife and what my wife means to me and to my whole life. So actually, uh, uh, well, we were not able to establish new relations because we were all locked down at home, but somehow, suddenly, the daily life changed. And many people ask me what to read during the lockdown. And there is a book in particular that to me is very meaningful. It's uh, Conrad books that uh, talks about uh, a man that has uh, to reach uh, a sailor ship, so it's a clipper, it's the second half of the 19th century, and uh, he has to reach his own ship, his own clipper that was far away from him, and in the middle of, these, uh, of, of this trip, I mean, there is no wind, and uh, it's, it's incredible because, I mean, there is no more food, uh, the, the, the ship is stuck, uh, and the ship doesn't move. And the book is The Shadow Line by Joseph Conrad. And uh, this is such an incredible book. And I thought about this. These uh, ships uh, had been designed after centuries uh, of, uh, I mean, engineering, and they were ready to face uh, the worst storms, the tallest waves, the strongest winds. But these ships were not ready to face the absence of wind. And that somehow made me think about what we were living and experiences. Because, yeah, on the one hand, it's, it's good and right to have projects because, uh, I mean, men... Uh, uh, naturally set up projects and uh, it's something normal for men like in the case of these uh, sailing ships but still the relation to reality goes beyond uh, the ability of men uh, to design and carry out projects so the relation to reality is something more something more complex something that requires men to somehow have recourse to resources that maybe are not there. And so sometimes the only thing we can do is realize that the most beautiful things we have are things that we got offered as a gift almost. And so you're asking me a little bit about the sublime. So to me, the sublime is that extraordinary moment in life that requires a lot of memory, of gratitude, that somehow compels a person to be grateful for what that person got. And so somehow it's about my ability to interact with the world. And uh, if you feel that maybe there's something missing, you start asking yourself questions. And uh, I heard what the people said about the meeting and everybody said about the importance of encounters and to what extent encounters are the key element of the meeting. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that uh, 
uh, a beautiful thing of the mating is to go back every year and find people back and see people again, maybe people that uh, you had not seen for 20 years, people that you had lost sight of, uh, simply because life sometimes drifts people away. Well, uh, this is not going to happen this year because everybody is going to follow it online this year. So we're not going to have that aspect. And somehow I think that we're going to sort of feel sort of nostalgic about uh, that time. And um, we are going to remember that as something extraordinary because the mating is always some has been uh, something that has always let us rediscover uh, our reality in a more extraordinary way. So maybe this is uh, the secret of the mating, so seeing things from a different point of view, so not just concentrating on what is uh, negative or the fact that uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, you cannot uh, see other people or hug other people and uh, also you have to change location and some messages uh, now are saying that uh, it's a great uh, occasion to transform problems into opportunities oh yes yes i know that uh, this is a very well-known uh, quotation but let's go back to the sublime if i had to define the sublime to me is something that is out of proportion. I mean, something that uh, is uh, really bigger than me somehow, something that is greater than me, that uh, somehow is overwhelming, something uh, I have the problem to define. And in this sense, COVID somehow pushed us uh, in a new direction. So if we are really human and if we're going to somehow keep a memory of all this, we will remember that uh, we cannot uh, have reality fully under control at all times. So I think that we're going to be more active and more humble. Well, this is my hope for the future, for the future, because I'm, uh, I'm not so hopeful when it comes to governments and uh, politicians. So I really hope that people will develop this kind of a meaning and sense. Well, what about the press? Do you have uh, confidence in the press? Well, I work with books, so we both work with paper. And so I think that reminding ourselves of that would be a good thing. So let's now go to Bologna, where Professor Zamani is uh, waiting for us. So Professor Zamani, turning problems into opportunities, uh, well, is certainly a very good idea, but certainly the pandemic is now forcing us to some very complex rebuilding work. So is it possible to envisage and foresee a new kind of economy, a civil economy, as you said so many times? And um, is it possible to use and apply models and patterns that are more sensitive uh, to uh, human people's needs? and condition? Well, thank you very much, Elisabetta, uh, for this question. So the fact that uh, the mating organizers have decided not to cancel the zero edition, it's uh, a great piece of news that uh, sort of leads us to a lot of hope. And Peggy talked about hope as uh, the child virtue, because somehow uh, it somehow sort of supports all the others. But why do we need to feed hope this year more than ever? I think there is a strong connection between hope and wonder. So we have plenty of reasons to be hopeful because this pandemic forces us to make a sort of final choice, a final choice between two ways out from this crisis because uh, this crisis requires a way out. One of the way, one way out is the so-called flooding model. When a river floods and overflows, 
Well, you wait for the flooding to stop and then you have teams of workers that start a sort of uh, resetting the bed of the river and the banks. And you go back to business as usual, so everything goes back to normal. The other way, the other possible way, the one I personally prefer, is that of the transformative resilience. So what does that mean? You Cheese the chance, you seize the chance of that deep crisis to change and transform things because, well, when it comes to extraordinary times, you need something deep and, uh, and transformative so you can fully transform to large parts of the social order. Something uh, that we should do because, well. Italy, and not only Italy, needs this kind of resili transformative resilience. What does resilience mean? It's the ability of a system to face its own vulnerability. So, how can you improve resilience? And as you ask me, in particular in our country, well, we should consider some large chunks. So, a first chunk, a first thing that should be changed and certainly, during the meeting, people will talk about that, is the world of education, the world of schooling and university. Well, reforms have been applied, but now you need more, because you need to change the structure, the philosophy, the paradigm, because it's still a, a, a tailor sort of uh, like model. And Taylorism affected not just, uh, uh, I mean, uh, factories and the industrial world. Well, certainly Taylorism entered uh, production sites and factories, but also it entered the university. I don't have the time to extensively talk about it, but those that know university very well know that the model being applied is the Taylor model. That's why, I mean, that model needs to be transformed. And also, schools and universities need to become a, a place of education. But if you take away education, what do you get? And Pope Francis has organized for next October in Rome on the 15th, an extraordinary event to ask many people to undersign a global pact on education. The basic idea is exactly the same. So universities and schools should go back to education as it was uh, the Greek school in ancient times. So the idea is to somehow sort of move from welfare state to community welfare. And this pandemic showed that very clearly. The welfare state was a big, big uh, sort of uh, achievement. Uh, and uh, so, and it was born uh, many years ago. But welfare state is not sustainable any longer financially. And on top of that, uh, I mean, the purpose it was created for is not there anymore. That's why we need to rely on the third pillar of our society, the community. And in order to do so, we need to go back to the principle written in our constitution in Article 118, the so-called subsidiarity principles. We need to apply it. So, so especially when it comes to, I mean, the third sector. So talking about subsidiarity principle or networks of the third sector is the same thing. And that is a great invention. And we need to apply it now. And uh, this is the only tool that uh, acknowledges what is happening now. And then the tax system needs to be also transformed. We really risk a lot if we do not change. What should we change? We should change the basic ideas. What do I mean? So. Productive subjects should pay fewer taxes than non-productive subjects. And our country is a very strange place because companies and workers pay more taxes than those that do not work. Non-productive subjects, you do not need to be an economic expert to understand that this cannot work. 
And by the way, this is non ethical at all because taxes should be paid mostly by those that do not produce anything, those that do not produce uh, uh, jobs or, I mean, earnings. And then, third point, we need a reduction of bureaucracy because. When we hear that we have uh, now in Italy 161,000 laws in force, it's incredible. It means that probably each one of us is infringing a law. It's impossible to comply with all of these laws. In Germany, I'm saying Germany, they have just, so to speak, 7,000 uh, laws in force. Why is such a big gap? So. We have a, a flood of laws, and this is a consequence of these excessive amount of bureaucracy. And you have too much bureaucracy that has taken over. Why that? Because we still have this culture of uh, suspicion. So it's all about suspicion. I mean, people think that there is always somebody who wants to dodge the laws and the rules. So maybe just to catch the one person that wants to do something bad, you affect hundreds of other people. So. Again, it goes without saying that there are always bad subjects, bad people, but we cannot consider everybody as a potential, I mean, uh, uh, guilty person just because there are a few ones. So, less bureaucracy. And then, a last point is the following one. We need to relaunch a big pro a big project uh, encouraging new entrepreneurs because over the last 25 years, every year in Italy, we have more companies shutting down than more companies than companies being created. That means that there is a drop in the entrepreneurial spirit, and this is our fault because we have somehow mixed up managerial skills with entrepreneurial skills. Well, when it comes to managerial skills, we have excellent business calls, we have excellent managers, top managers, but the managers in one thing, an entrepreneur is another thing. Professor Zamani, I'm so sorry, I have to stop you, because, uh, I mean, uh, Time is flying, but certainly you gave us so much food for top, so subsidiarity, less bureaucracy, resiliency, and well, thank you very much, and congratulations on the title of this edition, so about wonder, because we really need a lot of wonder to carry out all these transformations and changes. So thank you very much, and Christina, from Facebook, uh, talks about, uh, uh, asked us uh, the book mentioned uh, uh, by Doninelli, The Line of Shadow by Joseph Conrad. So I now go back to Rimini, to uh, Bernard Scholz. So can you give us, please, a little preview of uh, this next special edition that will start on August 18th? Well, uh, Professor Zamani and Luca Doninelli have already somehow raised so many issues that we're going to talk about. So thank you very much. You were so far-sighted because certainly we're going to uh, talk about, on the one hand, about our future and uh, knowing that we need to make deep changes. We have to. We will talk about a new relation between development subsidiarity and also between confidence and democracy because there is a diffused uh, a culture of suspicion that somehow uh, make uh, the future of a democracy complicated. We're going to talk about Europe, a new vision for Europe. We're going to talk about uh, uh, healthcare systems and, uh, well, that have been so uh, topical during this last period. And then we are also going to talk about dialogue between religions and cultures as we do every year. But again, this year we're going to uh, really adopt a, a sort of 
a new way of discussing. So we really want to, to uh, somehow start from uh, everything we experienced in order to enrich ourselves. We do not want to go back to ideologies. No, we want to start from reality. We want to start from the things we have gone through to define the pathway for the future. And Professor Zamani was so clear in uh, outlining some key topics and issues. So a few words now about our volunteers. They're going to be very important for the meeting also this year. And, uh, well, also for this event, hundreds of volunteers uh, have helped us uh, in Italy and abroad. So around uh, mid-June, we're going to tell the volunteers the ways uh, for them to participate and contribute to the meeting. So they are going to get uh, news and invitations so that uh, they will be able to somehow uh, join us and help us uh, carry out the meeting. We are all invited, of course, to make a, a little or big donation on the Meet the Meeting website because, well, I will say it very frankly, the meeting as well is undergoing uh, huge changes and uh, many of you have already contributed and uh, we are very grateful for any donation and uh, you can also make a donation and get a wonderful bottle of wine and if you do that and get a bottle of wine please just uh, make a toast uh, to the amazing yes some people are asking us uh, through facebook uh, how to join as a volunteer and again stay tuned because uh, you are going to get updates and news about that and maybe in the meantime uh, we can thank our guests and uh, say goodbye to them thank you very much Bernard you're still there oh yes so okay so we thank uh, Bernard Scholz uh, we thank Professor Stefano Zamani in Bologna and also Luca Doninelli, who just close to me in Milan. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, you saw uh, Bernard Scholz at the Pala Congressi in Rimini. And this is the place where the meeting started in the past and then it moved uh, to the trade show fairgrounds, but this year it goes back to the Pala Congressi. And uh, the Pala Congressi is uh, a venue that is very well known in the city, and the meeting is a favorite event also for major institutions of the city, and we have the mayor of Rimini, Mr. Andrea Agnassi. Thank you very much for joining us. I give you the floor very quickly. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. I got some indication about where to look. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much to you. So, Mayor, why is it so important to have this amazing in Rimini also this year? I guess you're happy about this decision. Oh, yes, first of all, this is a very brave decision and uh, this is a decision that conveys a very important message because uh, the choice of carrying out the meeting conveys uh, a very meaningful message and uh, it, it conveys a sense of a wonder, of amazement, of astonishment and uh, it's a really, really brave choice because uh, we went through something unprecedented and certainly uh, this year's edition of the meeting will be different because of that. We all went through the uh, I mean, uh, emergency crisis. Now we have the phase two that is also very critical from a social point of view. I don't know if you already learned something. Certainly we experienced something difficult and we saw that uh, technology was essential to us. Without technology it would have been even harder also to somehow 
sort of live our daily life and uh, to resist. And uh, we also rediscovered uh, the neighborhood shops. For years, we have uh, seen uh, the endless evolution of big shopping malls uh, with small community shops uh, and city centers uh, being emptied and uh, instead we rediscovered that. We have seen also what happened to the environment because after COVID, now who can feel the same about sustainability? We live in the River Po Plain area, an area that is so polluted that sometimes you have to carry out car bans in order to clean the air a little bit. And some people sometimes protest so much. And then you stay home three months and you get beautiful, fresh, crisp air once again, very clean. So, Mayor Nyasi, thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I guess that for the city as well, the meeting is important because uh, it's a sign of uh, reconstruction and relaunch. And uh, certainly this is the very first event that uh, is going to take place at the Pala Congressi. And the, with you, there is the managing director of uh, the Pala Congressi, Mr. Peraboni. So I invite him to take the floor. So thank you very much, Mayor, for having been with us. And Corrado Peraboni maybe can help us better understand this location. Oh, good evening. And uh, we already knew each other. We got to know each other some years ago. You were in Milan, I was in Rimini. Now it's the other way around. But again, back to the main thing and back to Rimini and the Palo Congressi. Well, it's a good sign. Well. Our job is about getting people together. So this sign given by the meeting is really exceptional. And it's very special to us in particular because uh, this e event certainly is going to be different but equally important. First of all, because it conveys a, a message of determination because the Mason Foundation decided to carry out the event. And also, it's about the ability of ideas to circulate in spite of pandemic, in spite of lockdown. Because ideas keep circulating thanks to uh, different uh, technologies and ways. And also about the uh, culture of suspicion that uh, was mentioned, well, this is a great sign of confidence, of trust vis-a-vis uh, -vis an organization that can provide uh, facilities that are going to be totally safe. So for us from the Italian Exhibition Group, this is a, a big, 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 big sort of uh, injection of trust and confidence. So maybe we have a little video that uh, can unveil the Pala Congress of Rimini a bit more. So I thank you once again and let's watch together this video. More than 2,000 years of history. Zero sprechi e innaffiamo con l'acqua piovana e poi and we si va in irrigate with rain water and you can reach it by bike. Sono 20.000 i metri quadrati attrezzati. We have 20,000 equipped square meters. Da 20 a 5000 posti in poche mani. From 20 to 5000 seats in few moves. Lavorare comodi, connessi e carichi. You can work comfortably, fully connected and charged. Distribuiamo il cibo in eccesso. We redistribute surplus food and we are really proud of that. 
La regia dell'evento a portata di mano. So the full direction of the event in the palm of your hand. Sono più di vent'anni che facciamo eventi. Abbiamo stato organizzando eventi per più di trenta anni, quindi una passione e esperienza a tuo servizio. Lasciati sedurre. Lasciati sedurre. Lasciati sedurre. Lasciati yourself be charmed and uh, here we are back together another key protagonist of uh, the special edition of the meeting will be music in relation to friendship and young people so we are about to close this meet the meeting event but before saying goodbye I want to tell you more about this incredible experience that uh, is called the International Music Friendship and we have an amazing connection with I'm in Milan but we have then Giovanni Grandi from Cremona he is the coordinator of IMF Italy Giovanni are you there oh yes then we have a connection from Germany Giovanni so Giovanni hello and then from Germany we have Alexander Engel one of the musicians and artists of this uh, wonderful musical initiative. And then from Latvia, we have uh, Maya Anderson. Good evening, Maya. And then from uh, Bolzano, I don't know if it's raining. Here it's about to rain. We have Francesco Siri. Francesco, are you there? Hello, Francesco. Good evening. So, Giovanni, I start with you, please. Tell us a bit more about uh, the IMF and why are you going to be at the meeting. So thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, uh, Elisabetta. So to me, IMF is pure wonder, wonder in my life, thanks to music and friendship. So in a nutshell, it's 1993 when three musicians, an Italian piano player from Italy, and uh, another from uh, Germany and Poland to, to become friends, start making music together, playing music together, and they start involving their pupils in these friendships. So from that year on, every year after the other, so we keep meeting, and uh, I discovered uh, this beautiful uh, history of uh, friendship and music in the year 2000, and I was still studying, and I found something incredible, unique, and unprecedented. It was different from any other musical master I attended because it's about uh, playing music in such an encompassing and a wide way. It's not just about the execution, the performance, it's something that embraces life in its full swing. So that went on, it developed, uh, it evolved, and uh, we have reached this year. So the big, big concert. Uh, that we had in mind. We wanted to uh, play a, a big concert with our Academy Orchestra and the Fifth of Beethoven, but what happened disrupted our plans. But thanks to the courage of the meeting and thanks to our madness, well, we will work together in spite of everything. And so, against all odds, uh, even this year, from six different countries, we're going to have a big, big night that uh, is going to take place during the meeting special edition. Thank you very much, Giovanni. And uh, oh yes, maybe before August, so uh, we will be able to tell this experience also about uh, the supplement I'm the director of, Buone Notizie, so I will be happy to tell your story. Uh, let's go now to Germany, Alexandra. Hello, Alexandra. Hello, well, good evening. So, why uh, did you decide uh, to devote a part of your uh, days and time to this initiative? Good evening, everybody. I uh, live uh, in uh, Germany, close to Hamburg, 
and uh, I play violin and uh, I've been uh, helping with the IMF uh, but uh, actually seven years ago Christoph and Kati uh, just two teachers asked me to go to Macerata for my very first IMF and when we sang and danced together in Macerata the very first night uh, IMF changed my life radically I found so many friends and then uh, every year we kept meeting in a different country. Last year something special happened. I was in Cremona for six months. I worked uh, in a uh, toddler school. I learned a little bit of Italian and after that experience I decided to help Marcus to organize the IMF because I really want to share my experience with uh, everybody every year and IMF is not just uh, a summer vacation, uh, IMF is something really special. So this is so special that uh, it reached out to Latvia. Maya, how did you come across IMF? Good evening everybody from Latvia, hello. Well, is it raining there? No, no, it's sunny. Oh, wow. So let's all go to Latvia. So tell us about this uh, encounter, about this meeting. Well, yeah. I started participating to IMF in 2006 and everything started uh, very easily and Siva Adra, a teacher, somehow m met uh, with Christoph, our dear friend, and uh, they met in St. Petersburg and there was a musical contest and so then there was an invitation and then that's how everything started and then this teacher invited me to attend uh, the IMF in 2011 and now every year I go back at the beginning I was uh, a student myself and then I become teacher myself and uh, when I went there the first time when I joined the IMF the first time I saw what really uh, playing music means in a new different way and I decided I wanted to become a teacher. I saw that you can really teach with love and joy and so I decided to to do that and so again your life too was marked by this encounter but now let's go back to Italy to Trento and Francesco Siri first trumpet in this orchestra so you grow up together somehow you have become a symphonic orchestra tell us more about that well very quickly please okay hello everybody I'm Francesca I'm 23 years old I played the trumpet and uh, I first met at the IMF 12 years ago thanks to the friends in Cremona and uh, I decided to uh, make music, uh, I mean, uh, my job. And so we decided to create a symphonic orchestra to play the most beautiful pages uh, and partitions of the symphonic uh, repertoire. But you are musicians, it's not just uh, something abstract. So now it's up to you to perform very quickly. I don't know what you're going to perform, but I know that you're going to be short and quick, yeah. So, we talked about wonder, so this is for you about wonder. Thank you very much, Francesco. Thank you very much 
to all of you, to the IMF uh, young people, Giovanni, Maya, Francesco, everybody. So what can we still say about May to meeting? So May to meeting ends here, but it doesn't really end now because please stay tuned on the meeting Facebook pages. You will get updates and news about the next steps so, so long before the official opening on August 18th. And uh, as uh, Brandon Scholz said, it is possible to donate to get something back, so a wonderful bottle of wine to support uh, this event. So you can find all the information on how to donate on the meetingmeeting.org and on the Corriere delle Buone Notizie, the insert that is published every Tuesday. We'll certainly talk about uh, the mating experience, do you remember? We already did it last year. So you see here the cover that we devoted to the 40 years of the mating. So stay tuned. And uh, if we stay together, certainly everything's going to be all right. Thank you very much indeed. And see you for the special edition of the meeting.